Ephesians 2.10, uh, it'd be good if I actually opened up the verse here, wouldn't it? <clears throat> I just have it. <laughs> Ephesians chapter number 2, we're looking at the Amplified. And uh, if I get to it here, I'll read it to you. I got, now I got to open the Amplified. There we go. It says, we know that we are God's own handiwork, His workmanship, create, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew that we may do those good works which He predestined. We looked this morning, in fact, that there's often many, many references here to something that was planned ahead of time, God, which God predestined, planned beforehand for us. So that's talking about the good works. Taking paths which He's prepared ahead of time. That's talking about a path, and that's been prepared ahead of time. The plans have been made for you. <laughs> Amen. Tell your neighbor, plans have been made for you. <laughs> They've been made ahead of time. See, God designed you, created you, and uh, planned your whole life out. Now, we have a choice. We can take that path, or we can just, just miss it. But uh, right on the other hand, uh, plans have been made. And, and if we take those plans and take those paths, which he, that we should walk in them, we live the good life which He prearranged and made ready for us to live. That's the Amplified. The good life which He prearranged and made ready for us to live. People oftentimes are trying to use their faith, but they're trying to use it apart from living, living the, uh, taking the paths which He's prepared for them. Amen. Well, I don't know what that path is. Well, the one way you find out is get your mind renewed with the Word of God. Number two, uh, you find that out in prayer. You find out what the plan of God is for your life. Um, and I'll tell you this, whenever you find out the plan of God for your life, it'll, it'll thrill your spirit. It'll, it might, your, your mind not, not completely understand it, but your spirit will be excited about it. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. And the plan, what doesn't, God doesn't communicate His plan to you or I's mind. Our minds don't get it. Our minds don't get it. Our minds are so many times darkened by the sense knowledge information around us. But God lives on the inside of us, and His Spirit will bear witness with our spirits. He'll pass that information, communicate to our spirits what, what His plan is. And so, but, but, but really, as far as His plan, um, so many things God wants to share with us, but He has to get us in a position where we're ready to hear it. We got to, His plan has to be received. Whenever he communicates, it has to be received. A lot of times, he won't even share anything with us about it until we're ready to hear it. Come on. Because, I mean, he's not casting his... He told us, don't cast our pearls before the swine. Before swine. That's not calling anybody a pig. It's just somebody, that, a swine or a pig, doesn't have any capacity to yes. value a pearl. Yes, sir. No different than a kernel of corn to him. He'll stomp it in the mud or eat it. You know? But he's talking about don't cast our, he tells us not to cast our pearls before swine. Well, he won't do that either. He'll only share things with us as we're able to hear it. <laughs> Amen. And as we're able to hear it means not just where it just bounces off our eardrums. He's talking about as we're able to receive it. Some things we're not ready to receive. Amen. That's why he doesn't share it all, all at once. Right. I mean, if he'd have shared with me all that we were going to be doing in healing school just, just years before that, I'd have run, tuck tail, and hide. Yeah. Yeah. Like Saul, King Saul in the Old Testament. Yeah. Yeah. Go hide myself in the stuff, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But see, he, he brings it gradually as we're able to receive it. Yeah. Aren't you glad? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like yeah, training in school. We don't, tell, we don't get kid, children into kindergarten and say, okay, open your algebra book, and we're going to talk about algebra. No, they don't, they're not ready for algebra. We start out with two plus two is four. We keep taking them on. That's the way God will do it. He'll take it on. He'll take you on gradually as you're able to hear it. Praise God. Amen. We're starting to bring Brother Juan up a little bit. Here he, he, he's doing some more for us, teaching a class and getting him up here, getting him used to the platform, getting him into announcements and teaching not to be so windy, you know, and so forth. <laughs> See, he's not here. Where'd he go? We get to pick on him since he's not here. Huh? No, oh, he's helping one of the children. So, uh, but anyway, but, but then getting him up to do some offerings. Just see, he's got to call the ministry. And, but if you would told him the first day he came here, he'd be doing it. He'd be going, ah, I'm out of here, he's random. <laughs> That's the way God is. He'll just lead, he'll take you step by step as you're able to hear it. Same thing with the plan. And so, uh, but we need to learn how to get ready to receive what he has to say to it. All right. So, um, 
he takes us he's got a plan and he wants us he said they're taking paths taking paths amen part of taking paths we've been let me just give you a rundown a little bit of what we've been sharing kind of sum it up a little bit taking paths includes number one in order to take a path you have to acknowledge it yes. remember we've been talking about acknowledgement a lot i think that was in something we, we put in one of the blogs recently um, so we got to acknowledge it so taking paths includes number one acknowledge it second of all taking god's plan or paths is to use our faith to obey god's plan right. yes. amen. amen it takes faith to step out into what he's telling us to do Amen. You don't just you don't just do it uh, by walking in the flesh. It takes faith because yeah. many times it doesn't look like the, the thing you really want to be doing. Yeah. But so number one, acknowledge the plan. We're talking about taking these paths. Acknowledge the plan. Number one and number two, uh, use your faith to obey God. Another part of prepare. Another part is preparing ourselves, like we talked about this morning, to fulfill God's plan. Yeah. See, we're bringing it all together a little bit here. Preparing ourselves to fulfill God's plan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, uh, that there's a lot to preparing. We shared some this morning. But uh, really, the, the, uh, like God taught me years ago, he said, I want you to start to say, I believe, and I govern my actions according to my belief that right now I'm being prepared for better things or, or greater things, the way he said it, greater things. Amen. And if you, if you think that way, you're always res open to how he's leading you and yeah. responding rather than saying, I, I, I don't, you know. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. So yeah. that's why he had me start to say that. Yeah. He wanted me to stay conscious yeah. Yeah, that's good. that I'm just not down here today sucking air. I'm, 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 I'm actually being prepared for yes, something. Amen. Amen. I mean, an athlete that's preparing, they're not just... Uh, loafing through every day. No, they, they have things that they are committed to, to uh, routines, exercises, certain things, and they're preparing every day. And, and they keep that, they're conscious of that all the time. So he taught me to say that. Say, I believe that I govern my actions according to my belief that right now I'm being prepared for greater things. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's him telling me, show God you have faith. That's be, preparing means you, that's one expression of faith. Andrew Murray said, before I take on anything, I ask myself, is this going to aid me in running my race? <laughs> wow. In other words, he knew that things were going to come up in life, maybe opportunities, maybe relationships, maybe, you know, open doors, things, things that would come up that could... Uh, that he could get involved with, but he didn't necessarily take it just because it arose. Right. Yeah. Right. The opportunity arose. He didn't always just take it because he knew because of his prayer life, he knew what the plan of God was and he was going to only take that if it didn't affect or, or if it actually was a part of God's plan, number one, or it didn't affect the plan negatively. Right. People get involved in all kinds of things and don't have time for God or, or God's plan. Amen. Amen. Remember what the, the plan's the center. The plan's the sun, and everything else revolves around it. Yes, right. That's how the Lord taught me. If you were here this morning, you remember how I shared that. So uh, there's so many things I, I noticed that uh, if you uh, examine the life of the, the ones used the greatest of God, they didn't have a lot of distractions in their life. Yeah. Hobbies, things like that. Yeah. Recreation, entertainment. Right. A lot of things they, they wanted to do. Well, it's going to be quiet, but uh, <laughs> amen. It doesn't mean anybody has to be bored in life. You can have enjoy life, but you just have to know between you and God. You can't, somebody else can't tell you what that line is, but you have to know between you and God what that line is and how far you can go with it. You know, I've talked to some of, some of you, you know, God deals with you along these same lines. I can go so far and enjoy that so far, and then I got to say, no, nah, I'm getting too caught up with this, you know. That's fine. You can, everybody has to work that out. Nobody can tell you. I can't tell you where that line is. You can't tell me where the line is for me. But my own spirit will tell me. The Holy Ghost will tell me because he's in there preparing me, try, trying to get me ready for what, what's coming. Amen. And I personally uh, encourage you to get with it. <laughs> get with the plan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
So uh, don't live by, you know, your own uh, opportunities that arise in life and so forth. Live by your own goals or, you know, people set goals. Goals are good, but you ought to have goals in line with the plan. Yes. <laughs> but live by faithfulness to the plan of God. Yes. Amen. 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 So do everything with, with being race-minded. Be, be ra no, I don't mean race like in a racial right. problem. I'm not, right. be race minded, the, the race you're to run. Yes. Do everything mindful of the race you're to run. Yes. Amen. What, what do you know what God's plan for your life is? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to talk a little bit tonight about how to get that. Amen. But, but, you know, we shouldn't be vague about this. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Get to find enough, t take enough time in prayer where you weed out yeah. your own thinking your own right. affections, yeah. your own yeah. desires, yeah. and so yeah. forth. And uh, it doesn't mean you don't have some desires. Right. I've got some desires in life I'd like to accomplish, yes, sir. some things I'd like to enjoy, you know. Yes, but I, I got to always, I got to, I got to always uh, measure that in line with, I, I got to make sure the plan is fulfilled first. Right. Yeah. The Bible didn't say, seek ye only the kingdom of God. It said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Yes. Put it first. Yes. And God will, God will uh, bring some of these things into your life and let you enjoy them. Yes. Yes. Amen. I don't believe that Christians ought to be bored. Amen. Yeah, well, anyway, I won't go there. I got, so I got to stick with the plan here tonight. <laughs> so do everything that, that as you do, race-minded. Well, somebody said, I can move over here and get this job and make more money. But it was, is that with the race in mind? Or is that with money in mind? See, we don't, as Christians, Jesus is Lord. Like Brother Copeland said, the Bible said that, but Brother Copeland, yeah, Jesus is Lord. But then we make, we make decisions based on money. Well, that's not Jesus being Lord. I don't follow money. Money follows me. And I'll tell you what money will come to. Not, not just, you know, me per se. It comes to the plan. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If I get involved with the plan, that's already funded. Yes. With a funding way beyond what I can fund. Amen. 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 The plan is fully funded. Yes. God would be working against himself to not fund his plan. Yes. Praise the Lord. Well, some of these, you're going to get, some of you are going to come to service here soon. So be always race-minded. Uh, uh, or uh, with not money minded. Right, right. Amen. You're, you're here to do more than just make money or pay the house payment. Come on, right, come on. Or make it to the end of the month. Right. <laughs> Amen. The highest purpose for you is to finish the plan. Yes. Finish the plan. God's not going to, when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, He's not going to say, well, how much money did you make? Yes. He's going to say, did you do what I told you to do? That doesn't mean we're not preaching poverty here. We're just talking about first things first. Amen. 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 So you can't make money just based on your house payment or I can make more money. I believe God wants you to make more money. Don't misunderstand me. You got, yeah, you're rightly dividing what I'm talking about. You just, you just can't make decisions always about finances because sometimes you might have an opportunity, but in here your spirit won't let you because the Holy Ghost is in there saying, that's going to pull you away from the plan. You stay with my plan and I'll take care of you even better than that. Amen. It's a faith, faith proposition. Yes, Hallelujah. Might not, God doesn't pay up every Friday night either, but he will pay. Yes. Ooh, you better believe it. Yeah. He'll pay you good. He'll do you better than you would do yourself. Yes. Praise God. About half of you believe it. <laughs> Amen. I'll tell you, the plan has caused Pastor Debbie and I a couple of times to pick up everything and just move. Without any promise, any money. When we got here, I didn't even know what the salary was. Pastor Tim Horton didn't seem fit to show me. God didn't seem fit to tell me. I didn't know what the salary was. Though I was the president of Spirit of Faith Family Church. <laughs> then I could look at the books and find out what my salary was. I didn't come here for a salary. Amen. I came here for the plan. And I was hurting so bad and out of the will of God, I just wanted to get in the plan. I didn't really think about it. I wasn't too concerned about money right now. I'm just concerned about getting back where I wasn't hurting anymore. I'm talking about my conscience hurting in me. So, praise God. I'm so, 
Uh, but it's just, just good to pick up a few. Uh, the plan will cause you sometimes to pick up everything, go somewhere you don't even know how you're going to make it or make your next house payment. Amen. There's something greater than money. It's greater than your, greater than your job. Praise the Lord. And you're being prepared for it. So don't flunk any preparation tests. Praise God. You don't have to have a word from the Lord a lot of times to know, well, something comes up, you know, and, and is this God? You just go by what is, how it's going to affect the preparation plan, the, the plan. You, you're getting ready to fulfill the plan. Is it going to take me away from that? Well, I don't even need to pray. If it's going to take me away from that, that's not God. Amen. You don't even need to pray. Tell your neighbors some things you don't even need to pray about. You just know. I mean, if it's going to take me out of the plan, take me out of preparation for the plan or something like that. Uh, because he's never going to lead you to do something to hinder the, your preparation or hinder the plan of God. He's not going to do that. Amen. He'll never lead you uh, or anything uh, to, to put anything ahead of the plan. Praise the Lord. School. Should we get specific? School. Job. Relationships. Amen. None of these should be above the plan. Recreation. Nothing like that. Just some of these things you don't even need to pray about. So, praise God. Now that you're all in church, don't treat these things as uh, not important. Don't treat these things as, uh, you know, uh, you might say disposable where you, you don't you can just kind of take it or leave it I'm talking about the plan you don't, don't treat it like you can just take it or leave it treat it like it's everything to you because if you really knew from God's perspective it really is everything to you everything you do desire out of life is in that plan now the devil won't tell you that he'll tell you like Jonah you don't want to do that he told Jonah you don't want to do that basically <laughs> paraphrasing Amen. Amen. <laughs> but see, that's a lie. Yes, yes, yes. I always tell myself, I want the plan. The devil says, no, you don't. I said, yeah, I really do. Even if my flesh doesn't tell me I do. Yeah, I do. Yes. I do want it. Even if I don't feel like I want it, I want it. Yes. The devil says, you do not. And I say, yes, I do. Yes. Flesh says that I agree with the devil. <laughs> and I say, I don't. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. All right. Now, um, there's a lot of things that God will use to prepare you to get in his plan. We're going to talk some about prayer here tonight. But there's just, just kind of flowing out of my heart here. There's a lot of things God will use to prepare you for his plan that uh, you wouldn't have picked to use. There are things that he'll have you, he'll have you take a job that uh, has a, a, a mean boss. Ah, no, he wouldn't. I'm trying to get out of mine. Well, that's your problem. Yeah. You ain't going to learn your love walk like you should because you ain't, you ain't down there where you belong. Come on now. Come on. You're telling it. This side likes it better, so I'm staying over here. You're telling it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Well, yeah, I just don't like him. Well, did God send you there? Right. I was at a job that was putting pressure on me. I had a lot of favor there for a while, but, they, but God kept saying, remember I kept saying, the Lord told me, kept saying to me, pull back, pull back, yeah. give more time to prayer and healing center. Yeah. Right. And see, that's because that was the plan. Yeah. It's not the plan for everybody, but it was for me. Yes, right. And, and I, I'm like, I, and every time I go into my boss, I say, boss, <laughs> he's a Christian man, a good man actually. Yeah. Uh, but see, he needed work yeah. and he needed workers. Yeah. And I'm going the other direction. Yes. Right. And that's not making him, you know, give me promotions or anything. <laughs> so I'm saying, boss, I, I, I'd just like to cut back another day, you know, and only come in. And, and it was a kind of a commission kind of job yeah. that I could do that. But um, so I, and, and so he started putting pressure on me. And, I, you know, just he didn't have in his heart what I had in my heart. I don't, I don't blame him for that. He's an employer. Yeah. And he needs workers, and I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. I respect that. Yeah. Yeah. But right on the other hand, I got to follow God over here. Right. 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 And you know, hey, if he needs another, if he needs to say you're gonna have to work somewhere else, that's his pride, it's his business, and right. he needs he needs to put, you know, that's the plan of God for him. He's a, he's a great businessman. He could make money quick. He can make money more more money going like that than you could by three days of work almost. 
just his call. Yeah. Yeah. Just where he was. I, I, I appreciated that yeah. about him. Amen. He, was, he was a good blessing. Amen. But right on the other hand, uh, you know, I, I had this over here tugging on my heart and I had to fulfill that. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, was, I was following that. And really, it put, it put a bit of a strain on the relationship. But, and I remember distinctly pulling up. I, it got harder and harder to drive to work and, and to pull up and get out of the car. I remember distinctly one day, the whole way to work, I'm like, I, I just want to turn around and go home. Just not even show up. I mean, that's not integrity. How many of you know that's not integrity? You're, 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 you're on the calendar. You're on the job. But uh, and I just said, and I sat out. I pulled into the parking lot. I sat in the parking lot. And, and it was everything I could do to open that door and put my foot on the ground and walk right. into that place. Right. I was so, my spirit was going another direction. Yeah. Yeah. My hunger for what God, see I'm going for God's plan over here. My heart's going up and, and I'm, I'm, I'm in this phase. I'm in a transition phase. Right. Going into another part of God's plan. Yeah. And, and uh, I said, Lord, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to go in there and I'm going to quit. I could hardly do it anymore. He said, unless I release you, you can't. He said, anytime you do anything and I didn't tell you to do, you're out of my will. You leave a job I didn't tell you to leave, you're out of my will. See, to him it was, more, it was about more than a job or paying the bills. To him it was training. It was training to stay put in the hard places. See, he'll take some unusual situations and prepare you for what he's prepared for you. Remember Brother Hagin used to pray that? Prepare me for what you prepared for me. If you get to praying that, get ready. <laughs> Y'all say amen. I'll preach over here a little more. You say prepare me and he'll say, okay, I've been trying. Now, now, now you stay at that job and don't leave. Yeah, but I don't, yeah, but I don't have any favor. My boss doesn't like me. I'm a Christian and he persecutes me and so forth and so on. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to get rid of the thumb sucker. I feel like Dr. Dufresne's anointing's on me tonight. Amen. And he'll have you stay put in a hard place until he releases you. And, 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 uh, <laughs> and, then, and then prove you there. See what you're going to do. Oh, God wouldn't do that. Oh, yes, he would. Yeah, you just don't know him. Come on. Yeah. At least to that degree. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then after you've passed that test, he, he's one. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Some things he'll lead you into. But some things God didn't necessarily lead you into. They just come up. He didn't bring them. But he will stand by and see how you're going to respond to it to see if you're ready for the next part of his plan. Yes, yes. When I got persecuted for going to Ramah, yeah. I, I was persecuted, shared a little bit of it this morning. Uh, but see, I had to pass that test. Yeah. What are you going to do whenever? Are you going to say, well, I just can't, I, I can't take this. I'm just not going. Yeah. Come on. See, start backing out of things yeah. Come on. because it gets a little rough. Yeah. Come on. I feel sorry for a lot of young people today. They got it too easy almost. So true. Everything handed to it's them. So Mama and daddy pay for their college. Mom and daddy, I didn't have anything but $500, and my parents didn't give me a dime to help me with Bible school. Not a thin dime. And if we had it to do all over again, I'd say, God, let's do it just like we did it the first time. Because I learned to get in the prayer closet and believe God and to receive his answers. And, and, and I thank God to this day. I'm shouting, clicking my heels. They didn't give me a dime. Because I learned some things about faith. No, he didn't bring that. But yet right on the other hand, he did stand back and see how I was going to respond. Are you going to quit? What are you going to do? No, I'm staying with the plan. Glory to God. Stand with the plan. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. People get a little whine in their voice because mama doesn't like them or grandpa said they're not going to get any inheritance or something like that. Let's see what you're made of now. Well, let's better get back to my notes. I'm getting the meddling here. Praise God. 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 All right. Let's get back here. Ephesians 2.10. Taking paths. Taking paths. 
Say it out loud, taking paths. Taking paths. <laughs> There's a lot to this, taking paths. You've got to acknowledge them, number one. You've got to use your faith to step out whenever he says it's time, number two. You've got to, uh, you know, uh, prepare for it. Like, like what I said, God, he'll take time to prepare you, and he'll use some unusual situations sometimes. He'll use jobs. He'll use mean bosses. He'll use, you know, uh, situations that you didn't, put, you didn't want to put yourself in. Amen. Amen. But then the third, that's the third thing. Then the fourth thing is to take these paths. Many times you got to pray them out. Yeah. 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 Amen. Another part of taking these paths is prayer. Yeah. There's certain parts of God's plan. And unless you pray it out, you'll never be able to walk it out. Amen. Yeah. Number one, you won't even know about it if you don't pray. When I woke up that morning, I told you a little bit about it this morning. I'll tell you more details as I get, there's, there's reasons I can't share everything now. But um, I woke up one morning, and this was back four or five, what, five, six months ago, something like that, not quite. Um, and uh, I, I turned my heart to the Lord, and I started praying and fellowshipping with God, and He started showing me some things about the glory of His plan. The glory, the glory's in the plan. I was just meditating on that. And, uh, and he said to me, where I was, I wasn't in, I was out of town. He said to me, he said, there's a further plan for your ministry yeah. here. Right. I wasn't in Cedar Rapids. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Further plan for your ministry here. Yes, sir. Why did he say that? Well, he's trying to get me my attention about yes, it. Yes, but second of all, he said it because I was in prayer. I wasn't off goofing off somewhere. I'm not, I mean, there's, there's times for things, time, but, but so uh, I'd have never known that. In fact, the thing, that, I had a little bit of a heart for that area, but I never thought much about doing much more there. You know what I'm talking about? But I'm there, and I'm in prayer, and he revealed some. Uh, he revealed a small portion of information. Yeah. Amen. Why? Amen. Because he wants me. He gave me just enough to get me to seeking him about it. Because yes. yes. that got my attention. It's like, whoa, yes, sir. Yes, sir. whoa! I, where'd that come from? Yeah. That wasn't out of my head. That's right. That's right. Come on now. That's one way you can tell. I think God does things certain ways, certain times, uh, just to let you know it wasn't your thought. Like whenever I ask him, "What's in the third phase?" How, how sincerity, Brother Don? I mean, before God. I was asking about the anointing. I was asking about the, 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 the you know, how God wanted to use me in the anointing. And he said, the aircraft is in phase three. I went, blah, 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 what? <laughs> but, what? <laughs> he does things that way sometimes. Say things and get your attention, let you know that didn't come out of your mind. Because that, that's not what you were thinking. But he gives you that information to get you on the right track. Because he's got a plan. He's trying to get you on the right track. And he wants you to pray about that and pray the rest of that out. See, that's not much information. There's a further plan for your ministry here. That's vague. Ephesians <laughs> 5 said, don't be vague. So I've been pleading my case with the Lord. I said, Lord, you said don't be vague. You, what you said was vague. So I've been seeking him and I got, it wasn't too long I had the, the next, see, we're planting churches. Yeah. 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 I knew it. I knew it. It's a church. I knew it. 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 Sister Sandra, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Amen. Better than you know it. Yeah. <laughs> Planting a church there. Amen. Praise God. Woo! Glory. Glory. Found out a piece of the plan. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 But see, he still wants us to seek him about it. Yes. If you pray more, you know more. Amen. Amen. So, uh, you got to pray these things out. Do you remember that eight-hour time of prayer I had, I told you about before we came here to pastor in Iowa? You remember uh, God spoke to me, and he, he told me, I want you to pray in tongues. Yeah, this, I don't think more than, this might be the only time in my life he told me how long he wanted me to pray in tongues. God just doesn't talk that way most of the time. Uh, but um, he told me, I want you to pray in tongues eight hours. Uh, don't get off on that because that's probably not going to happen very often, if, if ever. 
So I said, okay. So I started praying in tongues because I knew there was a transition. I told you about how, I told you some details about how I was, didn't want to acknowledge pastoring and, and uh, that call. And it was starting to affect my physical body, my disobedience and everything else. You name it, it was affecting it. I mean, if it had, my, my big toe was even feeling it. You know what I'm talking about? Just everything. <laughs> Disobedience, you'll feel it in every area of your life. So I'm, I'm, I, I, I finally surrendered to it. Finally acknowledged it to those pastor friends. I don't know if that was recently. I wrote about that, if that's this coming week blog. I hope you're reading the blog because I'm getting things out in the blog I'm not getting out anywhere else. Yeah. Say, what's that? A blog? What's that? Well, look it up. Yeah. It's, it's a blog. <laughs> it's on the internet. Yeah. It's on the website. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And it's for you. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm praying, and, and, and I wasn't acknowledging the will of God. And finally, he said, now, you're going to have to acknowledge to these pastors before we were out for a meal. And then finally, I, I told him before we went out, I said, I got something I want to talk to you about before we go. <clears throat> And uh, the way it all worked out, I actually got outside of the restaurant. We were in a car before I actually got to say it because of some things that happened. But I said, uh, I, I told them before we went in the meal, I, I said, got some things I want to talk to you about. I said, uh, they said, okay. And so we didn't get to talk about it at the, converse, at the table, just kept conversation, kept going other ways. So, but then I, I got, and then we got in the car and the pastor's wife, where we were at his church, I wasn't, we weren't speaking, but we were just there for some other meetings. And uh, he said, the pastor's wife said, uh, well, what were you wanting to talk to us about? I said, well, I, the Lord told me I've got to acknowledge to you that uh, he's dealing with me about another phase of ministry. Yeah. yeah. I said, he's talking to me about pastoring. Mm -hmm. It's quiet in the car and a little chuckle <laughs> behind where the, where the pastor's wife was. I said, what are you laughing about? I, they said, well, that's nothing new to us. <laughs> I felt like just saying, could you stop, Pastor, and stick? I want to talk to her outside, you know. <laughs> you know, this is so precious to my heart. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so, and so uh, they said, we've been knowing that a long time. Yeah. I said, well, <clears throat> I had to acknowledge it, and God's dealing with me. And so I finally had surrendered to it. Yes, yes. Well, then the Lord said, I want you to pray in tongues eight hours. Yeah. I said, all right. So I got her done. I, I think it, was, it wasn't all within one day's time. I don't, I don't think. I think it was actually a little bit over into the second day. Um, but I got it all prayed out. And I'm telling you, thing after thing, about four or five, I was sitting, I can distinctly remember a restaurant we were sitting in uh, within a, a few weeks after this. And within four, four, within two weeks, I believe, four or five things that had been out of place and out of order in our life just went click and went back into place, went back into order. I mean, just, just amazing. Praying in other tongues and, and being surrendered to the plan of God. So I, but see, what, what I'm endeavoring to say to you is there's some things that won't come to pass and there's some things you won't know unless you do pray. The knowledge of God's plan won't just fall on you. God will let you go through life and you don't even know it. His plan, you don't even know it. I said you won't even know it. Not because you shouldn't know it, not because you couldn't know it is that you won't, because he didn't say, I'll just share it. He said, call unto me, and I'll answer thee, and show thee a great and mighty thing. Yeah. You got to call, you got to be interested. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Interested enough to pray. Yes, sir. I'm preaching all right, and you're, you're amen, and pretty good, fairly good. <laughs> amen. But see, when I was praying those eight hours, what was I doing? I was interested enough to get that plan yes. he had for me, because I fully intended to take it. And it was through praying that out that that plan started, started in motion. Now go over to Romans 8, Romans 8, 27, 26 and 27. We'll get to verse 27. But, but when I prayed that in tongues, the Bible tells us what we're praying when we're praying in tongues. And if you're going to Romans 8, I'll quote, we're, I'm going to go there too, but I'll quote 1 Corinthians 14 too. When he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God, no man understands him, howbeit in the spirit, King James says he speaks mysteries. Other translations say divine secrets. 
divine secrets. You're talking secrets with God, one translation says. Hallelujah. Well, what kind of mystery or what kind of secret would that include? Well, it would include the will of God, the future, the, the plan of God for your future. You don't know. What is a mystery? It's something that you don't know. Actually, in a biblical term, it's something that is known by God, but it's hidden, and you can only know by the Holy Spirit in the biblical sense. That's what a mystery is. It's not knowledge withheld. It's a secret for only you to know. Amen. It's answers. And you have to go seek God for those answers. And praying in tongues is one way you seek God. So when you're praying in tongues, you're praying mysteries. You're talking these, you're speaking out of your spirit. What your spirit knows, the Holy Spirit's helping you to pray this out. So that's 1 Corinthians 14, 2. Now Romans 8, 26 and 27. Likewise, the spirit also helps our infirmities. What is our infirmities? Well, he mentions one of them. Likewise, the spirit helps our infirmities. We know not. That's one of your infirmities. You don't know everything. Amen. Besides me and Pastor Debbie, none of you know everything. No, I'm kidding. We don't know everything either. We're, we don't know everything either. We got, we got the Holy Ghost that knows everything. And we say we have an unction and we know, but we don't know in our head without Him, without the unction. So likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmities. We don't know what we should pray for as we ought. That's one of our infirmities. We know not. We don't know everything. We don't know what we should pray for as we, as we ought, but the Spirit helpeth us, maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. He that searches the hearts. I could preach on this passage of Scripture for the rest of the year and wouldn't hardly get off the first page of notes. This means so much to me. He that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit. God is the one who searches the hearts. He knows what is the mind of the Spirit. Now, what does the Spirit, what is the mind of the Spirit? It's what the Spirit has in mind. What does the Spirit have in mind? He tells us in the next few phrases. He, he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, for he make an intercession for the saints according to what? The will, the will, the will, the will of God. That's what the Spirit has in mind. When he's helping us to pray, he has the will of God in mind. Which to your mind is a mystery. But he's helping you to pray it out, so it's a mystery more, no more. Get this, don't ever forget it. Mysteries prayed out bring revelation. God doesn't have you praying mysteries just so he can sit up in heaven and poke Jesus in the ribs and say, <laughs> we know what they're talking We know what he's talking about, but he doesn't. He's having you pray so, you, so he can download that information into your spirit. Pray it out. Mysteries prayed out bring revelation. That's exactly what happened after that eight hour period of time. Things started falling into place that had been out of place because of disobedience really. And started falling into place. And then uh, the plan started set. See I started by praying that out. I'm setting that, in, that plan in motion. It's starting to move. It had been there all along but I didn't know what it was. I knew now it was pastoring. But remember, I told God, I think I don't want to start a church. I think Florida would be a good place to pastor. I started going down that route. I actually had my map out. We didn't have Google Maps then. We just had the paper map. I had a map out, and I'm looking all over Florida. I really did. I think it's a sign. I think we ought to move every winter, move Spirit of Faith Family Church to Florida for three, four months. Yes, sir. Let's go. Yes, sir. Maybe go to Christmas with our families and then say, adios, everybody. We're going to Florida. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's not God's plan. <laughs> but I, I, I had a plan, and he said, you, remember, he said, you just let that all up to me. I'm not just telling stories. This is the way you're to live, too. And pray things out. Hallelujah. And whenever the revelation, the revelation is readily available. Access it. Move into the Spirit and let Him show you. For the plan is glorious and the plan will excite you and the plan will thrill you. But not only that, the plan will bring all that you desire. Praise the Lord. So we started praying and we started we getting, getting the knowledge of it. I started saying, okay, God, here's how I'm going to do it. And He said, you leave that up to me. But he said, I want you to pray in tongues. And I did, for eight hours. And I'm down in, I was in Florida when Pastor Tim Horton called. <laughs> I was preaching in Sarasota, Florida. Right. Pastor Tim Horton called. 
How you doing? You know how he is. Real laid back. Love it about him. And he said, I saw you, I got your newsletter, saw you were going to be up here. I thought maybe if you had an opening, you'd come preach for me while, while you're up here. I was going to be, on, I had scheduled in Iowa a couple of places. And so I said, sure, yeah, when do you, and, and he was asking when we come. We set it up, and he said, and got the date set. And then he said, and when, when you're here, I got something I want to talk to you about. <laughs> I said, all right, good to talk to you. We'll see you soon. <laughs> I hung up the phone, and I started going, ha, ha, ha. I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew. Something's up. Something's up, something's up, something's up. Got the praying and then something starts moving. Got up here and uh, he took forever. (laughs) If you're watching, I love you. (laughs) Amen. Hallelujah. By the way, we're going to have him come back. He's in a transition phase, and the Holy Ghost said what I'm supposed to do to help him. So, but so he said, uh, well, you know, we preach, or I, I, I came. Pastor David didn't come in that particular trip, <clears throat> and I, you know, I think it was just was a Sunday morning only or something. And so he took, we went to lunch, and he talked about everything except what he wanted to talk to me about. And finally, I think we were even out of the restaurant, ready to get in the car, and he started talking about it. He said that he was going to be, you know, moving and doing some other things and said, uh, wanted you to pray about, see if you'd be interested in considering the church. Well, I knew, mm-hmm. I knew it was right. Yes, sir. But there's more to it than just me yes. saying, sure, we'll take it. Yeah, right. Right. Thank you. We'll be here next Sunday, you know. <laughs> no, I had to talk to her. This is, the, see, this is a big deal. This is changing her whole yeah. life, yeah. my life. But, yes. So we've got to get in agreement and everything. That's right. yeah. So I said, well, maybe, you know. I didn't want to commit because I wanted to be in agreement first. And anyway, to make a long story even longer, um, it all worked out. Many of, some of you were here. You know how it all worked. And, uh, but see, that, was, that just worked like, it's so easy. In fact, I, some of the people at Rhema said it, and Pastor Tim Horton said it, and I, I think it's true because I'd been all over the United States preaching. I saw how church transitions work sometimes or transition from one pastor to another work, and, and, and it doesn't always go real smooth. Yes. They talked about it even down at Rhema, how smooth this one went. Well, you want to know why? Prayed it out. Yes, sir. Prayed it out. This isn't just us yes, doing something. Right. This was heaven involved in something. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We had enough interest. First we acknowledged it, and then we used our faith, yes. amen, amen, to obey God. Yes. And then we started preparing ourselves, yep. Yep. and then we started uh, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I'm interested in God's plan. God's plan. When I was a teenager, I could not, I, I was, uh, <clears throat> I was out, I got uh, saved as a, whatever, 10 years old, I believe it was, and then started doing my own thing, just started going out and, you know, living like anybody else, teenager that just wanted to party or whatever. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> but uh, I had a problem. My problem was my best friend's mother was a Holy Ghost filled, <laughs> tongue talking, <laughs> praying the Holy Ghost, get words of knowledge and words of wisdom lady. And she, she decided... <laughs> You know, her, fun, her, her, her son's out of fellowship with God also. And uh, they thought we got in with the wrong crowd, but they didn't know we was the leaders of the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the most you, if you can keep some things hidden, maybe you can get away with it a little longer. But yeah, it's, you can't hide it from Holy Ghost people. So she zeroed in on her son praying in the Holy Ghost, and I kept popping up. Thank God. Thank God. You know, you, you kids that got a praying mama, just give up. Just, just say, Uncle, put up both feet and both hands and let's do this the easy way. Just say, Uncle. So she zeroed in on me and she started praying. She had some, she told me about it. She had some tremendous experiences. She'd get out in the spirit out in, over the farm. I grew up on a farm. She'd get out in the spirit, see me out there. And I got to, you know, I used to have fun partying. Yeah. <laughs> but when the Holy Ghost is on you, yeah. Yeah. and he's, mo- he's, he's dealing with you because yeah. somebody's praying. Yeah. 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 
you can't enjoy your partying anymore. And I'd leave parties early, and I'd, I'd pull that 1981 Toyota Celica hatchback back into the woods. I had a curfew, 10 or 10.30, whatever it was, and I'd be back there in the woods by 9 o'clock. I didn't want to go home, because that's, that's old fogey, go home. <laughs> sit in the living room with your parents on Friday night. I mean, dear Lord. <laughs> Didn't want to go home. So I thought, I'll just pull the... Yeah. And I'm just miserable. Yeah. Miserable. And I'm by, I pulled in back there and <clears throat> we had a, you know, some woods off the side of the farm. And I'd pull, turn off the key and I'd sit there and I'd say, and I'd just say, God, what is it? What do you want with me? Right. And I'd pray in the Holy Ghost. Because yes. I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. Yes, and no, 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 excuse me, I wasn't baptized in the Holy Ghost yet, excuse me. And I'd say, what do you want with me? And I was in agony. Yeah. Now, I'm not trying to be dramatic, but I'm just telling you the truth. One, one uh, night, I did that, and uh, whenever I finally pulled out of the woods and got my car out and pulled it up to the house and opened the door and the seat, you know, the light came on, yeah. I looked and I was, I was sitting out there and I was just beating the steering wheel. I'm saying, God, what is it with, you, with me? I, what do you want with me? And I'm in agony, and I'm, I'm weeping and so forth. And when I opened the car door, to, and the light came on, there's blood on the steering wheel. I had gotten so whatever worked up, my nose started bleeding. I'm not trying to be dramatic. I'm just telling you how, how I was in agony. I could not enjoy my partying anymore. Because, see, she's praying. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. That's, there's a lot of people that won't fulfill the plan unless somebody prays for them. Amen. And I'm not looking down on anybody because I wouldn't. Thank God for somebody willing to get in their prayer closet. Thank God. You know, these labor, the Bible said, pray ye the Lord of the harvest will send forth laborers. Prayer enables them to make the right decisions even whenever they don't want to. They just get so miserable eventually they say, well, God, I... I'm, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so I, I started, and I'm back there praying. Ms. Emily Mahaffey is her name. She came here one time. You all met her, I think. And uh, she's praying. And in the high school, a, a revival broke out of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I told you this story many times. And, and the kids starting getting, this is a denomination, well, it was an interdenominational high school, Christian high school, but many denominations there. I would say probably most of them were Mennonites and Brethren in Christ. More of a conservative kind of a place. And, uh, but the baptism of the Holy Spirit started spreading through that high school. Miss Samuel Mahaffey prayed that out. And by the Spirit one day, she came to the high school rather than her son, Walker Shurs, you know who he is. He, he, rather than him ride the bus home, she decided by the Spirit one day she needs to go and pick him up. Yeah. Yeah. She came pick him up, and she's standing outside the door waiting him for him. He, all the kids are coming out to go to the bus. The buses are lined up. And all of us are coming out, and, uh, and uh, I, she's going to pick him up. I think maybe she already had him. But, but I walk out, and that's the day I'd gotten filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. She looked at me and she said, you got it today, didn't you? I said, who is this woman? <laughs> Knows everything. Why? Because she prayed. I said, she prayed. I said, I said, got what? She said, you got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. She said, yeah. I mean, I said, yeah, I did. But she, she just came there by the Spirit <laughs> to see her fruit. <laughs> Praise be to God. Praise be to God. But see, then, from then on, I started praying in the Holy Ghost. And it wasn't weeks. If I'm thinking about the timeline, I think it was only weeks. Me being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Yeah, I, th I think that might even be a little too long. It wasn't long at all. I started praying in the Holy Ghost. And within weeks, I said to somebody one day, at the uh, lunch hour, I'm still in high school, what are you going to do after you graduate? This girl was a year ahead of me. What are you going to do after you graduate? She said, I'm going to Rama Bible Training Center. I'd never heard of it. Never heard of Brother Hagin. I had heard some, they had given out some uh, Smith Wigglesworth books and Lester Summerall books. 
I was devouring them. They gave me an amplified version of the Bible. I'm just thinking, I didn't know the Bible. The Word was coming alive. The Holy Ghost will teach you the Word. So I, I'm, I'm devouring that. But then she said, I'm going to Rama Bible Training Center. I had never heard of it. But as soon as she said that, something in my spirit went... And, and it's like something engaged. It's like a cog turned yeah. and caught. Yeah. 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 I said that for years not even knowing what it really was. I, I knew it was inner witness. Yeah. But I mean, I didn't really, I didn't know, I, I didn't, what, what, why, why did it manifest that way? You know, I didn't understand. Yeah. And it was only 10 or 12 years ago, the Lord said to me, the reason that th that's the way it was to you, like a gear caught, he says, because that's whenever you engage my plan. Now you're now the plan's starting to move forward. Amen. Now you're in gear with me. Amen. Within weeks of seeking and praying, and then start praying in the Holy Ghost, within weeks, I'm in the first part of his plan. For the first time in my life. Amen. I knew by the inner witness, I didn't know I was a spirit then, didn't know anything about the inner witness, but I just knew inside, in order for me to fulfill what God's put in my heart, I'm going to have to get away from traditional Christianity. I don't mean to be mean on anybody, because thank God they're born again. But it wasn't going to be, for what I needed to do, I wasn't going to be properly equipped. Come on now, you're helping. I needed some different training. I needed to be connected up with Brother Hagin's ministry. I needed to sit under that ministry. I needed to hear the truth. Anybody still glad you came to church tonight? And of course, that's where God had my wife and I to meet. Amen. We're a team. And she could tell you a lot of things about her life and how she engaged the plan of God and so forth. Hallelujah. What about you? Are you going to keep progressing in the plan? It's going to take prayer in the Holy Ghost. Say out loud, I'm going to pray more in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> your tomorrows are determined by your prayers today. My tomorrow, I'm walking out something that I never dreamed was his plan. Number two, uh, I would have never fulfilled it if I had not have prayed. So, so your tomorrows are determined by your prayers today. And they will only look like the plan of God if you seek Him in prayer. Amen. God sets up your tomorrows through your prayers today. He sets them up. As we pray, He orders uh, them, uh, what we're praying, according to His plan. Romans 8, 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmities. Then he said, for, he makes intercession for us with, with groanings which cannot be under he that searches the hearts, knows with the mind of the Spirit. He makes intercession for us according to the will of God. According to the will of God. According, you cannot pray your own plan praying in tongues. You can pray in English or your known language and pray out your own plan, but you can't pray in tongues. The Holy Ghost will not, he's faithful to the plan of God. He's more faithful to the plan of God than he is to you. Now he's faithful to you. But he won't side with you against the plan of God. He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Which is what we've been preaching on for weeks. Hallelujah. How are you going to know the plan? You're going to pray in the Holy Ghost. You're going to pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He'll set up all your tomorrows. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And his, your prayer life will set things in order that you could never set in order. Well, how on earth? I got this in my heart. How on earth could I ever fulfill that? Here's how. And just pray it out until you pray it through. You have no ability to bring a lot of God's plan to pass by your own abilities. Just because he planned it doesn't mean it'll come to pass either. Just because he planned it doesn't mean you'll even know it. You got to pray. Amen. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will show you things to come. There's a lot of things he'll stir you about because he has something he wants to reveal to you. Or something he wants you to engage. Or a divine connection he needs you to make. Or, or get to a place where there's a supply for you so because he's got something he has in mind for your life. But so he'll stir you up to pray. And you don't want to even know why you're praying. 
In fact, if you're praying in tongues, you don't know a lot of times what you're praying about, unless you get an utterance in English and an interpretation or something, which God does. So, but, but really, uh, it's because he has a future for you that you're not engaged with yet or don't know about yet. So he'll stir you up to pray. He has a blessing and a plan waiting for you, and he wants to reveal it. That's why he's stirring you up. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you won't pray, you won't know. That's true. That's true. And you can't fulfill what you don't know. Right. Nobody stumbles into the plan of God. Right. Everybody walks into it knowing. Yes. Right. Amen. God works through knowledge. So he reveals, he reveals his plan, and he reveals enough for you to take the next step. He won't reveal everything to you. He'll just say, I want you to go down there to that church. Well, now my grandmama's tears and my mama's tears. She's there on the altar over at so-and-so church. Well, God doesn't really send you to where the tears are. He sends you where the plan is. It's where the plan is. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm having me a time up here. I'm about half drunk. So he'll add it to you day by day. Amen. You'll just, you just got to take the step. He'll give you enough information to take the step. Well, if I do that, what's going to happen? He's not going to tell you what's going to happen. He's going to just say, trust me. Well, I don't understand. Exactly. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Just acknowledge it. Just say, ah, God said do it. Here I am. Like me or not, I'm part of Spirit of Faith Family Church, you know. <laughs> or wherever. There's plans for people other places too. But I'm just talking about where our plan is. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Now, let's go over here. To, uh, let's, let's, let's look at uh, this, if, uh, this uh, Romans 8 again. And uh, let me kind of wrap this up. Somebody said hallelujah. <clears throat> let me just wrap this up. So, uh, I've got to get to the right place here. Make the plan of God a target for your faith and your prayer life. Amen. You and I have got to lay hold of the plan. It just doesn't fall on us just automatically just because we were born or even born again. When he says here in Romans 8, 27 particularly, he said, He that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit. The mind of the Spirit reveals to the plans and purposes and intentions of the Holy Spirit, which according to this verse is the will of God. In other words, he's using us to pray according to the will of God. God has something in mind. The mind of the Spirit is the mind of God. Yes, it it's what God has in mind. Yes, right. Say it out loud. God has something in mind. God has something in mind. That's what you and I are praying out when we pray in tongues. Yes. So that's... Uh, as believers, if we'll live a consecrated life, if we'll separate ourselves unto a lifestyle that's conducive for the Holy Spirit to get these things across to us, then we will be constantly being brought the knowledge of God's will or what He has in mind. As we give ourselves to prayer especially. Then what happens, the spirit of seeing and knowing will come into operation and you'll know things. And you'll know the plan more accurately. And if you take steps and walk out what you do know, more knowledge will come. More knowledge will come. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, I'm just over into the edge of seeing and knowing. And so I'm just here to say to you, Bonnie, that although God had a plan for Brother Al longer down here, yet he knew that you would be spending some time on the earth without him. But the plan didn't depart with Brother Al. Hallelujah. So be encouraged. And know that you're not alone. Know that you're not alone. Know that you're not alone. 
For he is Jesus, ha, huh, closer than a brother, and even closer than a husband, and as an ever present help for you and for your time of need, your, your times of being aware of, his, of, of Al's absence. And he's ever present. So turn to him as you have been doing and constantly receive your companionship and constantly receive his, the Lord's presence and how sweet it is. How sweet it is. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Miss Bonnie, can I lay hands on you? I would like to if you would be open to it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So receive not the spirit of loneliness, but re spirit, ooh, the spirit of adoption. Taking you in. Taking you in. The Father takes you in to some places of fellowship which satisfies the deep longings of your spirit. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ha, ha, ha. Every need met. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. We sure love you. I know you do. Help her back. Praise the Lord. 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 First <clears throat> Kings 18 tells us about Elijah. He was talking to uh, King Ahab. He said, get up. Remember, there was a drought in the land because of Ahab's sin. He said, get up. There's a sound of abundance of rain. And then he set himself to pray that out. He's hearing, he's hearing in the spirit. He's hearing the plan of God. The plan of God is for rain to return. And he said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. And so he sets himself to pray that through. And as he prays, he prays it out. And the plan of God, which was rain, started coming. Amen. Amen. But what I want you to see is he was a man that lived a consecrated life, a life of prayer. And because he lived a consecrated life, he heard the plan of God in the spirit realm even before anybody else even saw it or, or knew about it in the natural realm. Amen. Amen. If we'll live that kind of a life, we'll see and know the plan of God ahead of time as well. Why? So we can pray it out. Remember we said God doesn't show us these things. You know, John 16, 13, He'll show you things to come. He doesn't show you things to come just so you can say, I know it. No, He shows us. Hmm. He shows us so we... Hmm. See, I'm just about, I'm just about over, over into the spirit realm. I, I apologize if you... It's not coming out very clear. But he'll, he shows us so we can pray it out. Because it doesn't happen automatically just because we saw it. See, Elijah, he saw it, or in this case heard it, but he had to pray it out. God wants to give you previews of your future, but it's not going to happen just because you saw it. You go your whole life and it doesn't come to pass. People despise prophecy because they've got a file full of them none of them have come to pass well of course not you just put them in the file and forgot about them you didn't pray you didn't say anything to God about them you didn't seek him about it didn't ask him about it you didn't you didn't make any confessions of faith over it he told Paul told Timothy fight a good fight of faith with those prophecies can't fight a good fight of faith whenever you don't even think about them Amen. A little different tonight. God's calling us to pray. See, we were back there in, in you know, the beginning of 
I, I, I told my story she could tell her story but the beginning of my I, when I had to engage the plan of God and and uh, I told you about the clock cog that I, I had that came through prayer and then we got to the end of phase one and there was a transition and the Lord said I want you to pray eight hours in the Holy Ghost and that came that transition was made through prayer I mean we pray all the time you understand that we're not just talking about forgetting prayer the rest of our lives we pray all the time but there comes seasons you got to pray a little extra find out what the plan of God is but but here's what I'm saying we're at another place spirit of faith family church is at another place where God has some things he wants to do and he's calling us to, to this kind of prayer again calling us to this kind of prayer we could go through the motions where we are it's been good but there's more more for us to do as a church amen amen I know some of it because we prayed know some of it but we don't know all of it how are we going to know we're going to pray in the Holy Ghost and don't be surprised as things that we go wow we didn't know that God will say of course you didn't <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah one of them is more of these church plants I know I keep saying that but I, I just it just stands it's just standing there all the time what's it standing there for so we can start praying about it we can either uh, just sort of try to bump our way through it, or we can pray it out. And if we pray it out, it'll just sort of almost fall on us. Hallelujah. Now, I'm trying to get to something here, and we're going to do a little praying. Uh, go over to, well, you're at Romans. Are you still at Romans 8? I don't know where I am. I think I'm half over in heaven, I think. <laughs> One definition here in the uh, book of Romans 8, 27, like he, he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit. He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. One of the words, intercession here, it means, one of the definitions, there are several definitions, one of them is fall in with. To fall in with. As we give ourselves a life of prayer, he's saying, you know, we're praying out the plan of God. Uh, we've, we start falling in with what he longs to reveal to us. And the Holy Spirit will fall in with us. Yes. Now, what on earth does that mean? In other words, we start getting hungry for what that plan is. And there's different ways that God, God can get you hungry. He can just stir you up to pray, make you hungry for prayer. Or you, you can get hungry because none of your ways are working out. Yeah. That's not the most spiritual way to get hungry, but it does work. <laughs> Your way's not working out. Anybody ever been there where your way didn't work out? Yeah. You can eventually get to hurt in so many places in so many ways that now you're hungry to find out what God's saying. And he's saying, well, finally, I didn't bring all their hardship, but I do take advantage of this opportunity because now they're interested. So we get a desire to know what God's plan, in, plan is, and we start praying about that, and the Holy Ghost will fall in with that. Ooh, I like that. I said, he'll fall in with that. And he'll begin, to, he'll begin to help you express the desires of the Father in prayer concerning his plan for your life. He'll fall in with that. Amen? He'll become one with us, in other words. He'll harmonize with you. He'll unite with you. Help you to express that desire to know the will of God to the Father. You'll be in, in expressions and it'll be tongues and expressions and yong, longings and yearnings and so forth, which you don't know how to express in, in known tongue. But he'll fall in with you. That's what he was doing whenever I'd pour my, pull my car back into the woods. Now at that time I wasn't speaking in tongues, but he was falling in with me still. I said, he's falling in with me still. Helping me to pray it out. Amen. Praise be to God. I, and so he takes those yearnings and longings of your heart and enables you to express them back to God in terms of the will of God. And as we yield to him, he also falls, uh, we also fall in one and become one with the Spirit who has given us the yearnings and groanings to express to God. This is how you bring forth the plans and purposes of God for your life. I'm interested in that, aren't you? Now, the 28th verse is in the context of that, and it says here in Romans, I'm trying to quit. I know, I know it's going long here tonight. But the 28th verse, right after that time of, where he talks about the Holy Spirit falling in with us, helping us, mm -hmm. 
King James says, helping us with groanings which cannot be uttered. When it asks, the Holy Spirit does that, and it says, and, and we know that all things work together for good. The Amplified says, God being a partner in their labors. People have used this verse religiously to say, everything that happens is God working his plan for good. No, it's not. Babies dying and tornadoes and COVID and stuff like that. That's not God. It's not that's not God working for his plan for good. He's, he gets, it's where, he, it's where somebody falls in with him in prayer and works with him in prayer that he gets to do his plan. And things will work out the way he wants them to work out, which is good. Things don't work out for good automatically just because, just because. They work out for good if he's able to get involved with it because somebody yields to him. Yes. Nobody yields to him. He doesn't get, can't get his way. Yes. Prayer is one way he gets, we yield to him and, and allow him to have his way, praying these things out. So God being a partner in their labors. Then it says in the Amplified here, verse 28, all things work together and are fitted into a plan for good. Oh, I like that. To them who love, uh, whose love, who love God and are called according to His purpose and des- His design, His purpose. Um, so, uh, can I just finish this up? I'm almost done here. Notice this term, they're fitted into a plan. Oh, we've been interested in the plan. We've been talking about the plan. By praying in tongues and God getting His way, He's able to fit us into His plan. Isn't that good? As a, a man prays, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, uh, through the anointing of the Spirit, God brings His plan into manifestation, and He fits men into it in order to bring His will to pass. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's a good plan. Yeah. But He's got to get men fitted into it, yeah. Yeah. including you and I individually. How's He going to do that? Well, how, how did He say He's going to do it? He's going to do it through praying in other tongues. Yes, Amen. That's how God got me into His yes, plan. Sir. Got me into praying in other tongues, yeah. Yeah. praying the plan out. Because my, my mind has a plan, yeah. Yeah. but see, God has a plan. Yes, sir. You'll find the plan of God advance much quicker once you start praying in tongues yeah. and not just English. Because yeah. your English is limited. Yeah. Right. And if you only pray, pray limitedly, you only pray what you know, then you only get what you know. But if you pray, out, get out beyond what you know and pray at what the Holy Ghost knows, which is the mind of God. No, now you're tapping into something way beyond you. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's how you get over into the supernatural life, and, and you engage God's perfect will. You get, in, you get beyond just this, this is okay, okay. You know, like being called to the ministry. I'm called to the ministry. Pastor Debbie's called to the ministry. We could be in the ministry doing something that is, is in the ministry, but it's not really what he had in mind in the ministry. We can have faith. I'm, I'm trying to quit. <clears throat> We can have faith for everything we're doing in the ministry because I can take you back to a time that the Holy Ghost said to do it. We're not just, yeah, this sounds like a good idea. Let's try this. My goodness, the devil will beat you up trying this and trying that. What about what what the Holy Ghost is saying to do? What about praying it through? What about getting the mind of God? Don't stop, you know, just stop asking everybody else about what they think and start going to God and getting the mind of God for yourself. Amen. You pray in the Holy Ghost, He'll fit you right into His plan. He'll fit you right into His plan. Hallelujah. And how does He do that? You start praying in tongues and, and eventually your mind will get quiet. A lot of people never get their mind quiet. But you pray in tongues, eventually your mind will get quiet. And you'll start to see where, or maybe not see, but recognize, I should say, where that's coming from. That's not coming from up here. It's coming from down here. And you'll begin to identify where that's coming from. Your mind will get quiet. You'll become more conscious of this. And then things will start floating up while you're praying in tongues. Sometimes it's a day later. Sometimes three days later. Sometimes a week later. I've had as long as two weeks later. You pray something out. And, and all of a sudden, bloop, something just comes right up out of there. Just, just, it seems like it's just not even related to anything you're doing. And every time, whenever that happens, I go, oh, I, that, I know I prayed that out. I know I prayed that out. Maybe not yesterday, but I just, just spent that time in prayer a week ago or whatever, and I prayed that out. 
just comes so clear. Yeah. Just comes so clear. Yeah. So when you're praying in tongues, that's what happens. Things start fitting. God starts, yeah. God starts putting things, he starts fitting things in order down here. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And an a, uh, inner knowing starts forming on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Something begins to form deep inside of you uh, and begins to, and it's much deeper than your intellect, much deeper than your reasoning, and it begins to form in your heart. And you can't even describe it to people sometimes. People say, well, what is it you're trying to tell me? And you, uh, you can't describe it in words sometimes. But it, eventually it'll be able to be something you can describe. But at the time you can't always describe it. But it's just forming down in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as you pray and pray, it keeps forming, keeps forming. Yeah. And, and he's, he's, it's, he's, uh, he's having you pray it out. And uh, eventually, it'll come clear. And you'll go, oh! Yes. Man, I'm telling you, when that starts happening, you better buckle your seatbelt. Because yeah. that plan, you get to praying in the Holy Ghost and the revelation starts flowing. Not only is the revelation flowing, it starts moving. It starts, it's, the, the thing starts... It's like you get in gear. It, you, you get in gear with it. Hallelujah. You buckle your seatbelt because you're, you're going for a ride. And it's a joyful ride, exciting ride. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're laborers together with him in these things. Thank God. Let's stand to our feet. Thank you for letting us go a little longer tonight. I don't, I don't even know how long I preached. Long enough. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to end tonight with a good old-fashioned prayer meeting. Oh, my goodness, Pastor, I want to go home. Okay, go home. We'll do this without you. No obligation, but I just want to, I mean, we're, we're going we're gonna to just pray until, if you're done, then Feel free to go. Praise God. Ben, I wanted to fellowship. Okay, fellowship on Wednesday night. Amen. 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 Some of us, we need to get, <laughs> get some things. We need to get the mind of God. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Anybody ever, ever, anybody ever gone through phases of your life, you just feel like you're spinning your wheels? Yes. I mean, the wheels are turning, but not, nothing's moving forward. Ever been there? Yes, sir. Don't feel bad if it's right now. I've been there. But sometimes pray, not, nothing gets that unstuck except praying in the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Amen. Sometimes he'll, he'll show you, well, the reason that you're just spinning your wheels is because I tried to talk to you about my plan back here, but you weren't paying attention. Right. I wanted you to do this. Yeah. 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 Amen? Amen. Boy, as soon as you get that revelation, and, and, and sometimes there's timing for some of those things. Yes, sir. And you're ready for it. And he says, okay, move out into it. Things start, mo life starts moving forward again. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're just going to pray. You can pray right there if you want to come up to the altar. <clears throat> That's fine too. If we get a little piano music or something back in the background. And as you say, what am I praying about? You're praying about the plan of God. Plan of God for your life. Plan of God if you want to pray about the plan of God for the church. Whatever. Praise the Lord. I would encourage you to at least, you know, don't just be, pray for five minutes. Let's get beyond that a little bit. What do you say? I'm not going to put any time limit on anybody. You can go whenever you're done. But uh, let's, be, let's have a reverent atmosphere. If you want a fellowship afterwards, go out in the lobby, close the door or something like that so it doesn't interrupt people that are in here praying. But just, just get your mind quiet. If you've got children over here, we understand that. You can go get them. Certain, I don't know, what, times they, what time do they close? They don't. They close when we're done. <laughs> Okay. All right. So get your children before you leave. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Just had a few people to minister to. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Don and Carla, can you come up? Peratushendede. You can just say Peratushtandele. Rasangi ete pos onshene pando shekita e posovasa in ten ten ton to. There's coming. Just around the corner, a surprise. Samokoshte, 
something that you didn't figure with your mind would happen. But just stay faithful and pray and you'll see, you'll see this new day. Hallelujah. You'll see a new day. So just be faithful. Just be faithful. Just be faithful. Praise But these God. things don't just come. You have to use your faith. And you call it. And you say, Father, you said something's coming around the corner. You said that it would be a new day. So I say so. Praise God. And you pray it out. <clears throat> and surely you will see it. And the enemy has tried to take you out. You understand that. But you did not give in. So take strength in your bodies. Strength in your bodies. In Jesus' name. Be strengthened. Vanessa. Tim, I want you to come up here too. Pero tu shananik and ush ederebreto et handande ederebreso kusht and ederebrenda ederebresike. So there's much more praying to do. You've already done praying and you felt like, wow, got through that. <laughs> got the plan there. But there's much more praying. Tim, there's much more praying. And there's things that you have to step into now. There's things you have to step into now. And there's more praying that must take place. So be faithful to pray this phase out now. In donde shinka kiko umasi kete ederebreso, stepping into a new phase. Yes, yes, that's right. And then amaste, whatever that means, and and I believe it's helps ministry, yeah. but stepping into a new phase yeah. Thank you, of Lord. helps ministry. <clears throat> you're going to notice ability. Uh, you're going to notice anointing, equipment, brother Tim, to help us in ways that you haven't in the past. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And Vanessa, God has things for you, but it's your responsibility to help pray that out for Tim as well. You understand that? Yeah. Mm, thank you, And there are things that you must step into, but take this time to help pray out this phase now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So let's pray. If you want to come to the altar, if you want to sit where you are, if you want to walk around, that's fine too. Thank you, Father. Just seek him about your plan. Whenever you're done, you can go. Feel free to go whenever you'd like. I want to say something maybe before we get too far. The Lord's been prompting me lately, ask me more. Ask me more things. In other words, we just kind of want to just say, Lord, I'm waiting on you. And he's saying, ask me. Ask me. So let's start out that way. Let's do that. But say this with me. Repeat after me. Say, Father, I ask you to give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you and of your plan for my life. You said, don't be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is and that you would fill me with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So I ask you for that tonight. I don't want to be left in the dark. I want to know what you want me to do in life. Amen. Hallelujah.